All right, guys, this is getting crazy. I created um, an artificial intelligence agent for car dealerships, and I want to show you exactly what it does, how it works. This thing takes inbound, outbound, uh, will take 20 customers calling at the same time, no wait time, will lock everything in, in the CRM. It would do one transfer, appointment booking, collect information. It'll call up to new leads as well if you wanted to do it. Um, you know, it can do a lot of things. It's not perfect yet, but at the speed things are going, I'm confident this is going to be the future. Watch this video entirely if you want to know how this works. This is my product here. A lot of people are working on the same thing or like a in, like in a different setting, but basically AI uh, for phone calls. I, I really see this going much further than we where we are today. Uh, it's pretty impressive. By the end of this video, I'm also going to show you a test call I made with my agent and um, you'll see, uh, you know, the limits and where it goes, where it's going. I'll uh, run you through it basically. And if you find yourself interested in trying something like this, I'm going to show you or um, leave you bit, like before the, the video with uh, what to do next. If you want to jump on the wait list, that's got to be possible. But just make sure you uh, listen to the whole thing before you do so, because I want to make sure you understand um, what this means for the auto industry and all industries, I think, um, whereas more AI agents are going to pick up the phone in the future. I want to show you a little bit of um, like use case for this, you know, fake agent or fake receptionist or AI agent, call it what you want. I've called it a uh, an agent here at, uh, at Puzzle Auto. Um, this is a product I'm working on with a few dealerships right now. We're piloting the thing. Some are live uh, in terms of specific, maybe, um, you know, uh, calling sources like third party sources, that kind of thing. We can really like play around with that just um, until we can get like a, uh, have a solid product, um, we can, you know, export to all tracking, uh, line tracking um, call or call tracking lines for dealerships, whatever the source. Um, it's It's been pretty impressive or interesting to play around with th that kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm gonna show you a few examples, talk to you through it, uh, see how it, uh, like how it works, where like the limit right now, um, how it can be improved. If you're listening to the podcast version, I still advise you jump into the video at some point if you can, um, you know, right now or in the future. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcast or on um, Shopify, you can see the link in description. But what I really, really like about this is that um, it's pretty customizable to any car dealership right now. Um, in this specific example, we're going to review a Chevrolet dealership in the U in the United States. And um, basically what I like so far is that it's 24 seven. Um, basically it takes all calls from all sources if we decide to do it or to do so. Um, it's 24 um, seven. If you have like a uh, voice over IP system, you can reroute calls to specific numbers uh, during the, like during the day or at nighttime or on and off office hours, right? So you can basically have a different speech or a different agent style uh, depending on the time of day, which is super cool. It's pay per minute. Um, so I've expanded to see like whatever, you know, how much does it cost like versus like a real receptionist or a real team that's taking inbound calls um, in terms of like, you know, comparing costs. And I found it to be from 30% to 50% cheaper. Um, Aside of the fact that we're providing perhaps a better service, uh, faster service as well, appointment booking, more information as well. It's easier to uh, train as well, um, just because you can handle multiple calls at once. So there's no one waiting on the line uh, with, with that kind of thing. Uh, the information can be provided straight up for from the agent. I'm going to show you in a minute how it works. You can book appointments, all departments, finance, car, um, you know, car sales, new car, pre-owned. Um, you know, body shop, service, fixed stops, parts, whatever. Streamlines the process. So in terms of training your AI agent, it's really easier to have like a, a solid uh, like process in place just because you're training one, uh, you know, fake person in a way. And, um, you know, as you go and as you improve the, the agent itself uh, in terms of customizing it to whatever you need in your car dealership, your style, your DNA, whatever, um, you know, 
it makes it pretty easy to produce a complete phone agent much quicker than training a new set like a new person into that role um, where we'll see in this industry some turnover um, more often than not um, so once it's done it's over and the thing is i've been just working with a few dealerships now and from the first one to the fifth one i knew exactly how to train it on a specific knowledge base we just had to tweak just a few things depending on whatever's you know uh, whatever management wanted the agent to answer to these calls and what or to do or like what were the like the perfect outcome for them so it's a little bit different depending on the store because you guys are all different um but little to, to no training needed that's for sure um just because we're training basically a tool a knowledge base we feed it new information um like period like every day or every week or every month and i see it um you know improving over time as well um, it's also consistent it's like you know and it'll, it'll sh it, it basically it basically will show up every day right which is a problem with some employees uh, maybe they'll just call in sick or whatever this won't happen here of course it's not perfect I, i've run a few tests uh, sometimes it's just like either clunky or like you know um, it ends up being like in, in a dead end so we've been actively working on that specific um, aspect just to make it better but what, what I really also like is it sent full transcripts and summaries to the CRM. And um, basically, depending on the CRM system you have, you might have the call log directly and create the customer right off the bat because you'll have the information. Plus, uh, you also get the recording of the call. So you really have like a, like a full and solid uh, summary of that call. OK, so what I've been doing, implementing those tools with you know those like our clients basically we've been just doing like a, some kind of a quiz just to, to know uh, what are the operation and the hours of operations it's pretty straightforward usually we can find it online department fallback option so whatever happens when the phone agent um, or like the, the puzzle agent doesn't have like the answer um, we want to know what we should do okay if it's on at say like uh, during a sales call a service call whatever we need just to like to have a fallback option so we can maybe collect information from the customer and just do um, have someone else call back or do a warm transfer during the, the office hours okay so uh, we create like a new tracking number which we can like insert pretty much anywhere we'd like uh, one of our clients right now they decided to go with multiple tracking um, you know numbers just because they wanted to have like cust like a customized experience, whatever like wherever the customer would come would come from. For example, if they call from Auto Trader versus their website, it would be a little bit of a different introduction, uh, knowledge base a little bit different as well. Um, you know, just to make it more contextual, that's pretty cool. Track outcomes. Um, so basically, we can have the agent do appointment booking, follow ups. Uh, put on do not contact list if they don't want to be contacted anymore that's more relevant for outbound calls which i'm going to show you in a minute um, and also create like a full knowledge base to train the ai agent um, on our client specific needs um, using chat gpt that's pretty cool because we've been using ai to create like the knowledge base so it makes it much faster m like more complete and this is basically one of the reasons we can make this product super affordable for car dealerships today just because we don't need extensive uh, human resources tools or you know um, you know actions to make it work and put it in place it's actually super impressive how quick can this be done and um, how efficiently can it like it can be done as well so um, obviously we trained it like we trained the agent on sales and service department knowledge base and then what we've been doing with um, our clients so far, um, our, at least our beta, beta clients, we've been just, you know, figuring out where we want to stop. Because at some point you want to turn that agent into a salesperson to book an appointment or to sell a product. Um, like, the, like we just have to have discussion over on the spectrum where it should be for you. Some dealerships are really aggressive in terms of booking an appointment and some are really like more laid back. So that's possible as well. Um, what we've done, what we've done also is connected the dealership's calendar for appointment bookings. 
Um, in terms of integrations right now, we're a little bit limited on every like kind of tools we can integrate with, but um, we can basically set up to that thing to work in a cal calendar to book in a Google at agenda and have this notification sent out for now. Um, currently working on a few more integrations just to make it work. Um, maybe with other like service providers or email providers, just like Microsoft would be for some of you guys. Um, and also other CRMs that, that but that's going to be in the future. I don't see it as a super, like super big issue for now, uh, since it's already coming in as an email. So we'll see. Um, also appointment booking, warrant transfer, collect information. So if a, you know, customer is asking for specific questions, we can guide that, guide them through a track, uh, like a uh, customized and uh, track we agree on. And um, basically we can collect a set of information and have like a little pitch to book an appointment. If not, we have fallback options and then we can, we can just, you know, provide more information to that customer. Okay. So this is really for the inbound um, use case. So basically it, like I, if you, if you take it, like I wanted to create an image on how it works again, if you're listening to the podcast version, it's going to be a little bit more, um, you know, confusing because this is really a diagram of, you know, what's uh, like a flow chart of what's really going on. So here there's the inbound call. And then um, like the agent's got to decide if it's really a sales call, finance call, service or other, or just like a general question one. It will decide after if there's a way to provide information based on the customer's question. Warm transfer, if they want to be transferred to someone in specific or someone on the sales team, they can ask for it, right? They can collect information, whatever they need. Um, you know, just basically maybe they need information for their insurance. Um, just we'll collect information and then we'll create a callback uh, option for from someone who can help them with their question. Or uh, that's the best here, um, booked appointment calendar. So basically just trying to answer a few questions and then move on to appointment booking. Um, this plays in the role of receptionist, but also a BDC agent. Um, so it can be quite handy having these calls handled by this agent like this way. And if ever it, like it hits a roadblock, um, we on our end are uh, getting alerted by, let's say scenarios where the agent is not able to provide the information the customer was expecting or just there's a bug or something. Okay. Because this is still happening. This is like super new technology. Um, anyone that tells you that's not, that it's not happening is either like really m more advanced or they're hiding stuff, but I don't know. And, um, basically what I want to do, what I want to make sure is just improve the, the, the actual, pr like the product and then continue to feed the knowledge base, like the master knowledge, not a knowledge base. Um, so we can make the product better. And whenever it provide, like it collects information either for appointment bookings, it will take notes, transcripts, and it will send it to your CRM. Um, some integrations are easier than others, like anything, but, um, we have a workaround that pretty much works with any kind of CRM, um, at least in the automotive space, that's for sure. And a uh, new updated CRM plus notification. If you choose to have notifications on your end also, and you have, if you, if your CRM is creating like a new contact, whenever a new, uh, lead is coming in, we can send that lead in and, um, you know, uh, qualify it as like a phone, uh, phone call, like a phone up, but, um, it would be puzzle agent as a source. And then you'd see how many of these calls are coming in on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And what's the, uh, like, what's the end result with these calls and how is your performance? Um, how is your store doing performance wise with these calls, whatever sales finance service. Okay. Makes sense. So, um, just wanted to illustrate like a few good reasons to use a system like that and where like, and why this is where it's probably going in the future, you know, uh, just qualifying customers. It's pretty cool because it, like there's an instant answer. You won't find customers waiting on the line for two, three, five minutes, 11 minutes, because I called in a dealership the other day and I waited for 11 minutes. I'm not even kid kidding you. And I'm sure there's worse examples. So, um, you know, this is taking care of that problem. Machine learning as well. Obviously the knowledge base is like is feeded. I've been playing around with this for three, like two months now, and it's already way better than it was 
on day one just because of this. Okay, so it's impressive. I can't wait to see what's going like what's gonna like what what, what the tool is gonna be in six months from now, twelve months from now when we when we have like dozens of uh, of car dealerships using this. Also, warrant transfer. It's flexible. It qualifies prospects, right? Um, usually, no no shade or no bad intentions here, but usually the receptionist or the agent sometimes, depending on their level of training and uh, experience, will have more issues qualifying the customer. Whereas this, um, you can have a few questions asked and then it's going to move on to uh, warm transfer and then the information is going to be collected upfront. Um, for example, then like the phone number, the email, the information, the vehicle of interest, what they need, what the customer needs. And then we can do the warm transfer if for a reason or not just hands up in, you know, um, voicemail or whatever and, it, and 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 the prospect is not leaving their information message or what they need uh in the past we had a little bit less power or leverage on how we can call back that that person um you know uh, just because we're missing information and we basically dropped the ball maybe for a good reason um to answer that customers because uh not everyone is you know available at all times maybe that specific person might have been on a call with a customer on the delivery you know um finance manager might, might have been busy with a customer application whatever right so at least we have more information to call back and to keep the conversation going um so uh, set sales at service appointments this is pretty s straightforward why, why i like this basically you could have like six people uh, calling in at the same time and then we'll book the appointments in the calendar um, now we're still working on a few ways to integrate in a better way because sometimes it will overbook or book like a, um, you know, like the best time for the customer, but your, um, I don't know, like your, your, your service uh, department might not be available at that time. So it's like, it's much more like a preferred time than a confirmed time. So we'll have the, pre the preferred time booked in and then it's going to be the dealership's job to um, you know, take that information, confirm the appointments or uh, propose new date and time to that customer if, you know, we just can't make it on our end. OK, um, collect, provide information, custom pads. It's it, like it's really about really th that's more the custom part of it, because I feel like warm transfer and sales uh, and service appointment is really the bulk right now. What's what's really going on? Um, but sometimes we just need to collect collect information. Um, but uh, I'm gonna like I'm gonna jump to the uh, to the outbound portion of the, the like the, the puzzle agent and show you why it's pretty cool. Okay, so between uh, let's say 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., you decide whatever like um, you know the time frame or time zone um, you are calling your customers or follow up with people just because it's based on the area co area code of um, you know the the lead. So a new lead comes in you're based um, like East Coast, okay? So it's gonna call from 9 a.m. Like it, 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 it's gonna call only if it's between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. during that day. For now, that's how it is. Uh, might change in the past, but right now it kind of makes sense just to make sure because we know dealerships are, are open from 9 to 9 usually. And if we have to do like a warm transfer, it usually works, um, especially if we don't stop at 9 p.m. because if the call takes like two, three minutes and then we try to do a warm transfer, and the uh, people have left or uh, like, you know, the, the car sales people have left or the, the dealership is going to be closed. Of course, it's a little bit different for service, but you get the point. Um, you can import a list of contacts you wish to have um, your agent call. OK, so let's say you want to do renewals. It works. Uh, you could do like the first line, just calling people and say, you know what? Um, I, I'm going to show you an example later, um, just in a moment. And it's going to make more sense. Credit app documents, um, I see dealerships struggling with just calling back people, follow, following up with people just because they're missing a document. Um, you know, uh, while doing credit app might be like a payslip or something like that. And also I've been playing around with the website engagement. So whenever we have first party data, so information that's been coming in from the dealership itself, uh, the website, um, let's say we track that, that, that person to like, um, we, we like inside puzzle, we have like an emerging or like we're building a CDP basically like in-house and we're already able to say, let's say someone who submitted a lead 10 days ago, they come back on the website today. 
uh, we are identified the, like the, the same guy looking for the same vehicle and then we can have uh, the agent call them back and say hi um, this is Ali from XYZ uh, Chevy um, I was wondering if you're still interested in learning more about the you know Silverado uh, would you like me to have someone prepare like a like a credit app or um, you know a payment scenario if so what would be the term for you what would be the best term and then it turns into like a sales conversation and it makes more sense okay and um, what I like about this is that you there's no way or there, there there's been no way until recently to do something like that just to make it contextual and timely in terms of contacting your customer because in automotive timing is pretty much everything right like some people find themselves like look, look, looking at cars year round, but in reality, these guys won't be changing cars more than every two, three, four years. Right. So it's really important to hit um, the nail when, you know, people are really showing signs of interest, even if it's an unconscious, because they usually don't know we have this information. But that being said, always make it ethical and um, in terms of um, and compliant to whatever is your country or states, you know, laws and regulations around this, like privacy is really getting more and more important and more, um, you know, watched, right? I was, I, I, I should say, um, looked at, I would say. So here's an example of if a new lead comes in into your CRM. So hello, uh, Mike, this is Mark calling from XYZ. Uh, Chevrolet, how are you to, doing today? Reaching out regarding the credit app you submitted on our website. And basically after that, it turns into like a freestyle conversation between customer and uh, the agent. So basically, if you if you see where I'm going with this, you can have a thousand leads um, per month and only have basically one BDC agent or one Internet sales manager that would take only the more engaged customers into a deeper conversation and have like a real convo with them if they're missing information and trying to push them for the sale. So it really skews down the amount of effort that has to be made from the sales team perspective. So it can collect information if, um, you know, it's a good time to talk. If it's later, we can set an appointment for a time to call with a specialist or um, have the, the agent call back. But in this specific situation, I, I, I'd rather have like a real human call back but set an appointment inside your dealership um, or CRM, sorry. More like the, the, the most of you guys have a scheduling tool inside their CRM. If you don't, you're really missing out because like that's a whole like other topic, but you could really leverage self, um, self-made from customers um, appointment booking in your store, okay? Information verification so we can have like a set of, diff of different, you know, uh, questions we absolutely have to ask in terms of a specific lead. If it's a credit app, there should be qualifying questions that are specific versus new car, used car, whatever, right? We can discuss financing. If there's a trade in what it is, what's the mileage on them and then always schedule the next step. Okay. So we can basically train this agent to be the perfect sales rep for your dealership. So this is another example for renewal. Uh, the collection of information is pretty much the same. But basically, the script would be a little bit different and start the call with how are you today? Like, how are you today? My system notified me it would be a great timing to consider upgrading your vehicle while keeping your current monthly payment unchanged. Is this something you considered lately or are you interested? And then we could A, B test whatever likes the opening opening line and what's the conversion ratio to appointments to um, kept appointments to sales and up to gross profit. I got uh, I got the platform inside puzzle to make the data all like aligned and centralized so we can basically see this. Uh, of course, we need a little bit of volume to have like a clear indication of what's really going on. But in the end, you could have like a A to Z test on what's really working and what kind of call is really, um, you know, uh, generating dollars for your store. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, credit app basically, uh, Let's say uh, I know a lot of you guys, especially the ones uh, specialized in subprime or whatever you're, um, you know, you're, you keep calling back or trying to reach out to people for their, um, you know, their uh, information, their credit information, just to complete the, the, the bank, um, what, what the bank is asking basically. So maybe the payslip, 
you know, the employment status, whatever, right? Or like a confirmation or uh, someone who's co-signing uh, on the deal. So this could be done also automatically outbound using Puzzle's agent. Okay. Okay. So I want to show you like an example of a call I did. Um, I'm, uh, it's just me calling to the dealership. It's a Chevy dealership. And I just wanted to play around with the tool and see, does it work? Um, you know, what's the outcome? I've like, I've done a few tests. I, I, I took this one, which, which makes sense. Uh, some uh, like some to be honest i've but like i've gone a little bit crazy or not what i expected but that's basically the goal just the more volume and more tests we do we can just arrange things and as we go um it's been much smoother on the latest deliveries or latest beta, beta customers um than the first one of course but it's uh it, it's pretty impressive to see how we can leverage this tool to make it um you know work for you guys um, I'm just gonna push play here. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Hi, this is Ali at Martin Chevrolet of Torrance. How may I help you today? Hi, Ali. I'd like some information on the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado. I'd like uh, to get some lease payments. Thank you for reaching out. We have various financing options available for the Chevrolet Silverado 1500, including leases. Our finance team can provide you with lease payment details tailored to your budget. Would you like me to assist you with that? Uh, yeah, please. Great. To provide you with accurate lease payment information for the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado, I will need some additional details. Could you please let me know your desired lease term, estimated annual mileage, and any specific features or trims you are interested in? This will help me provide you with the most accurate lease payment options. Yeah, sure. Um, I was looking at a 48-month lease. This is for a company. Um, I was looking to get the monthly payments, basically, uh, and I'd like to look into either the Silverado RST or the Silverado uh, Custom Trail Bus, if possible. Thank you for providing those details. For a 48-month lease on either the Silverado RST or Silverado Custom Trail Bus, I will need to check our current lease offers and rates. Please allow me a moment to gather that information for you. Thank you for your patience. I have checked our current lease offers for the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado RST and Silverado Custom Trail Boss. Please keep in mind that lease offers may vary based on location and other factors. For a more accurate quote, I recommend contacting our finance team directly. However, as a general estimate, lease payments for the Silverado RST start at Texitex per month. And for the Silverado Custom Trail Boss, lease payments start at Texitex per month. These figures are subject to change based on factors such as down payment, credit score, and other applicable fees. Is there anything else? Of course, in this spe specific situation, we'd have to load the, um, you know, either like there's two outcomes. So basically whatever you want the, like the agent to provide payment numbers, that's one. Or if you don't, um, you know, we can have it like transfer or do like one, one transfer or booking appointments or just have a speech around like, well, uh, I'm not like, it depends on a few factors. I'd rather have you speak to a specialist or, you know, just jump right in to collect information or more information about what could influence this. Some of you guys might not want to do a, um, you know, a payment on the phone or we can have the, like the agent provide, like, let's say it's going to be five, uh, 527 by weekly, but it depends on a list of factors. And also, you know, if there's, you know, special offers or incentives currently, would you like me to put you in contact with someone who could verify um, those incentives and applicable rebates for you on that specific vehicle? And that could be like an appointment or one transfer again. Um, otherwise, if you want to do like if you like if you want to like the agent to provide like a base or like a ballpark number, we can have the, um, the database fed with whatever's the current um, you know payment on specific vehicles that's got it that's can be that can be done like fairly easily we've been doing it with one specific dealership um, it's um you know it's a Japanese store um, so it's uh, it's fairly straightforward there's no negotiation there's no like variations between the, like it, like with the prices so it's been possible so it's really a matter of understanding what you guys really need I can assist you with no, that makes sense. Uh, can I take, uh, can I book an appointment with someone on the sales team to review my options? Absolutely. I can help you book an appointment with our sales team to review your lease options for the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado. May I have your preferred date and time for the appointment? 
Yeah, I'd like to book an appointment for November 21st at 11 a.m. Thank you for providing your preferred date and time. I have scheduled an appointment for you with our sales team on November 21st at 11 a.m. They will be expecting you and will assist you in reviewing your lease options for the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Um, no, not at the moment. Thank you. All right. So, of course, I made it easy on the agent right now because I booked myself, right? But there's a way, like, we can basically choose the, um, not the color, but the, you know, the temperature of your agent, where, whereas it's really customer service oriented, just really laid back, not pushy, or really against like, um, you know, on the, like on the opposite, which is more salesy or like the, the make, like make it more aware or, um, you know, uh, you know, empowered to book the appointment because the, the, you know, the outcome that we need is really to advance the sale or move the customer forward in the pipeline. So, in this case, it would have been a little bit different. It would have said, so this is the information. Would you like to um, book an appointment with one of our specialists to review uh, options for you on the lease, like on the 2024 Silverado lease, depending on these models? That would have been the call to action or the better way to do it. But I really like this uh, example anyway. Okay, so basically what you guys get is the notes. So basically, if someone would take notes of that call, so it's all written down and the transcript line by line verbatim, and then uh, we can send them to a CRM, get the recording, notes, trans transfer. So this is how it works. So Hi, this is if you Allie at um, are Storm. interested in something like this, um, you know, or you have questions or you're like, you know what, I hate this, you know, it's, I, I don't see how this works for this. Leave me a comment below. Um, I want to do a little bit more videos on that specific topic. I've been playing around with it for a few months now. Um, it's something I want to improve with. Uh, it's a new product as well. We we ha we have a few better um, customers already. Um, just uh, and um, if you're interested in joining the, the the beta program, when I open up more slots, uh, you can just join the waitlist at puzzleauto.app/agent. If you're interested in trying this in your store at some point, um, you know, just let me know that you're interested because when I uh, I'm ready to open uh, five to ten more new slots. I'll be reaching out to that that specific list. Um, I'm also gonna like run you through a little quiz as well, just to understand what you're expecting and looking for. And um, if you're on the other hand watching this and you're a vendor or industry, um, you know, a partner, uh, we have a new uh, Puzzle Auto Partner Program. Um, you should apply to use um, this kind of tool if you see. Um, that some of your clients would benefit from using this this tool. You could uh, benefit for from you know uh, priority support, you know uh, discounts for your clients as well, and also a um, like specialized training for these kind of tools. So it's just a matter of like teaming up together. It can help you improve your service, uh, provide more value to your clients. So guys, this is it for the video. Um, thanks for listening. And uh, if you have any custom like uh, any questions for me, let me know. Cheers. Thank you.